Hello everyone, it's good to be back with you. Let's just say Nagoya took a bit out of me. Our Midsummer News Roundup begins with a moment's reflection. In February 1998, the opening and closing ceremonies for the Nagano Winter Olympics took place on a stage both shaped and coloured like a sumo dohyo. 15% of the opening show consisted of sumo ring-entering ceremonies, with Yokozuna Akebono's timed to coincide with the entrance of the Emperor. And, get this, every competing nation was led out by a leading sumo wrestler. In very stark contrast, in July and August 2021, the Tokyo Summer Olympics saw sumo play no part at all. You perhaps saw the ceremonies, the ska music and the image Japan tried to convey. But trying to appear international should not involve completely denying the existence of traditional sports, surely. How, I ask, in just 23 years, did Japan allow sumo to fall from Olympic hero to Olympic zero? It seems this channel has a job on. That's not to say sumo was completely uninvolved in the 2020 Olympics. NHK sumo announcer Mr. Osaka put his voice to judo and weightlifting for a start. And Yokozuna Hakuho, as you might expect, took matters into his own oversized hands. July 28th saw photographs like these surfacing on social media. Hakuho inside the Budokan, watching judo and posing for photos with gold medalist Shohei Ono, who is actually friends with Terano Fuji. The Yokozuna's visit, one suspects, was carefully timed to coincide with the latest round of Sumo's $5 million lawsuit against a former consultant, Chairman Hakaku being unable to address Hakuho while appearing in court. When Sumo chiefs finally could respond, days later, they were far from flattering in their words. Total lack of common sense, said press chief Shibatayama. The government decided on no spectators. We, the Sumo Association, promised to back them on that. And there he is, attending as a spectator. It's a big problem. It appears Hakuho used his status as Mongolian sporting ambassador, held since 2015, to obtain permission directly from the Mongolian delegation to attend. But Shibatayama insists no permission from sumo chiefs was given. And his coach Miyagino is too nervous to say anything at all on the record. Who does run that stable? The latest news we have is that sumo chiefs are discussing what to do, and are really demoralized at having to deal with things like this. Still then, it's all about the Hackman. His news this time overshadowing even two life-changing events for Tetano Fuji. The first was the completion of the new Yokozuna's first ever roped belt, and ensuing practice of the Shiranui ring-entering ceremony, sadly not called upon for Olympic display. That took place at his Isegahama stable, under the guidance of his coach, who made Yokozuna himself exactly 31 years ago. The second event was confirmation of his Japanese citizenship, which of course frees him up to take over Isegahama Stable when his coach retires in 2025. That came on August the 4th. Teru's Japanese surname will be Suginomori, taken straight from that of his coach, the man he respects most. Teru said his decision to take up citizenship coincided with his in-ring comeback in March 2019. Reading between the lines then, it was a case of shoring up his future so that he could stake everything possible on that comeback, and deliver the spectacular results we've all enjoyed watching. Elsewhere, ex-Yokozuna Kiseno Sato has held the groundbreaking ceremony for the construction of his new Araiso stable building with former stablemate Takayasu among the distinguished guests. While this new stable is being built, 
the four recruits who came with Kise from his old Tagonoda stable, will be living in a temporary building and training at the University of Tsukuba Budokan, to which the media were invited for their first official session. The coach has also appeared on the popular Sunday evening TV show Junk Sports to further promote his Araiso brand. He hopes for his young wrestlers to come on in leaps and bounds and become the face of that brand in the near future, allowing him to fade quietly into the background. July 27th brought news that Asano Yama had been infected with coronavirus, but that it was not his fault. He seemingly caught it from an unnamed lower division stablemate who was showing symptoms. Five other Takasago stablemates and coach Takasago himself were also infected, despite all having had the first vaccine shot. Now, assuming Sumo's official line that no wrestler has ever been reinfected holds true, Asano Yama must then have dodged the virus on every one of those umpteen visits to the poorly ventilated nightclub, which is really quite something. Another two unnamed wrestlers from unnamed stables have also tested positive in the past two weeks. However, none of the cases was serious. We still don't know when our wrestlers are in line to receive their second jab. Meanwhile, July 30th saw Takagenji's fate finally sealed, the sumo board recommending he be dismissed from the sport for smoking cannabis in Nagoya and, it was revealed, on at least eight previous occasions. It was also disclosed that the investigation into his brother's act of violence in summer 2019 had uncovered acts of bullying on his part too, and that he had been effectively on probation since then. Well, they have to make this look non-political after all. Coach Tokiwayama, who must be cursing the day Takanohana dumped his students on him, has now been punished yet again for something these students have done, and will suffer a further pay cut and a two-rank demotion. In fairness though, he had previously coached these boys for years at the old Takanohana stable and cannot evade responsibility completely. Asked to sum up Takagenji's actions, a busy press chief Shibatayama said, he has smeared the Sumo Association's name in dirt. Okay, I think we're all caught up. In the next videos then, it's back to the action in Nagoya and a review of both the sparkling successes and the agonizing failures.